This time on the show, AD of Dual Core joins us for a little file recovery mojo using Scalpel. Then Jed Putterman of Pogoplug joins us to talk cloud storage. And can Bash Scripts monitor your CPU temperature? Plus, radiating Paul the Camera Guy's brain with a 16 dBi Yagi antenna and transmitting Wi Fi over 500 milliwatts in the US. Can it be done? All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name's Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morris. <laughs> Your weekly dose of Technolust. And what are you doing? Uh, I'm just, uh, you'll, you'll find out. This is for the D-block when we, when we decide that we are going to radiate Paul's brain. Oh, yeah, that thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, Good email about that. Yeah, that looks Game radio, guys. We really love cool. You. <laughs> <laughs> so, how's it going, man? I am totally stoked. Did you what have a wonderful Thanksgiving? Because I did. I had an amazing Thanksgiving. I went down to LA. It was delicious. And I had like basically two different dinners with all the family that I saw. Nice. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was good times. I uh, <laughs> just I did uh, Thanksgiving here. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, you did like the How I Met Your Mother thing. Where like huh? all the friends get to it. Oh yeah, you need to watch that show. It's really good. No. <laughs> Where all the friends get together. Is that on TV? Yeah. She, it, she well, still watches that. I think it's that. on it's Hulu funny. or maybe it's on Netflix. I don't know. Uh, I watch it on TV. Anyway. No, I watch it on DVD. Ah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I watch it on Easy TV. <laughs> anyway, or Loki or whoever's got it this week. Um, <laughs> let's talk about our favorite thing in the A block called What's in the Box. What's in the box? Oh. I guess I can Yeah, that's, that's drum roll for <laughs> Before we get to the awesome content, but we do love that you guys send us goodies and you know, it's the This is in a bag. Time of giving Not so much a box. Stuff. Ooh, anti-static. This is from Must be good. Paul. He said, I found this. Not our Paul. He said, I found this. The question is, do you have a computer that you can plug it into? Well, let's Enjoy. find out. <laughs> First of all, oh, there's a, there's a booklet beep, with beep codes and beep codes. BIOS info. Oh, okay, yeah. what else? I remember when I built my computer and it was uh, beeping oh, at me and I had no what? clue what it meant. Look at the LEDs. Is that an ISA card? I don't know. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I haven't actually seen this before the show. Um, AMI 2.2. I don't know what this is. This should be the trivia question of the week. Do you know what this piece of hardware Paul sent us is? Uh, <laughs> Phoenix ROM BIOS Plus. Is, is this that a, what, it, what it is? I don't know. It looks if really this is pretty. A Phoenix Bio or it IBM looks like AT. something that I could actually solder myself. It seems like a debug board <gasps> for. It looks like somebody soldered this themselves. It seems like a debug board for BIOSes. Yeah, it's got all these different codes for. Do you think he soldered BIOSes. it himself? Look at look at the. Yeah, yeah, totally does. That's good stuff. That's awesome. Well, thank you. I will investigate or someone will email me <laughs> and let me know totally what the heck it is. Maybe we'll find an ISA machine that we can plug it into and Ooh. get their blinking beeps to yes. tell us Thank what's wrong with BIOS. <laughs> yeah. That sounds fun. Yay. All right, I'm I love BIOSes that tell you that there's no keyboard connected and press F1 to continue because oh, those, those are, are the best. Those are the worst. It still does that. It makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah. I had that issue when I built my computer at the hack shop I get or at the hack house. Really? I, see, am I the only yeah. one that gets sad with the whole like, oh, everything's going EFI. Now it's like, you're going to turn on your computer and yeah. it's going to be a big shiny you're logo the only and it's going to go sad. doom. It's like, I want to see the RAM count and the fun, happy, 80 well, characters I mean, I still like that, characters. but I really like the prettiness you as well. You hold down command S when you do. You hold down <laughs> command S. I don't have a command key because I'm leet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he says. As I alienate a third of our audience. We love but you, too. you have a computer that has a Windows key. It's called and a super key, and I, it doesn't do anything because I haven't mapped it. I'm hacking now. <laughs> Let's hack right into the next segment. What do you say? <laughs> that sounds awesome now to me. Stay tuned because coming up, AD of Dual Core is going to be joining us once again for a little file recovery segment using Scalpel. You know, we remember, you should remember, we talked about that a few weeks ago. As well as Kirby on again for the meow of the week. But now let's jump over to our Pogoplug interview. 
Being in IT and not using the right tools to get the best results from your clients is like a surgeon not using the best, most reliable medical equipment. How can you expect your clients to work with you? And that's why I use GoToAssist Express by Citrix. It's the best remote support tool. GoToAssist Express is designed with speed and usability in mind and makes it easy to get in, diagnose, and resolve the problem fast. In fact, GoToAssist Express users report an average of 40% increase in productivity. It's like getting seven days worth of work out of a five day work week. And with unlimited use, you can support all you want for one flat fee. I've used remote support tools for years and GoToAssist Express is the best. So fast, so reliable. Start using GoToAssist Express today and you'll see why it's the leader in remote support. Right now, Hack5 viewers can try it free for 30 days. Visit GoToAssist.com slash HAK5. Again, that's GoToAssist.com slash Hack5 for 30 days free trial. Today, guys, we have the special pleasure of being joined by Jed Putterman, the co-founder of uh, Pogo Plug. We were just talking about this. Shannon was just playing with the new stuff. How's it going? It's going great. We're having a great time with this product. I've, I remember seeing this when it first came out, and it was all like, I got to say, I was like, oh, hey, that's a Shiva plug, you know? And, uh, and I love that because it's all like Linux embedded and we love that kind of stuff. What has brought you to the latest version, this mobile version? Well, we've gone through a few versions and uh, you know, always sticking to the core idea of what, what the product should be. Yeah. Um, no longer Barbie pink anymore, though. It's uh, yeah, Listen, we have some old ones in stock and get you a few of them. Yeah, you could get me some. Yeah. Maybe Shannon wants some Barbie pink ones. <laughs> We're, uh, yeah, it's, you know, so colors definitely changed. You know, uh -huh. we, uh, we like to stand out and be different. We also like to respond to our users. So right. you know, black is the new pink. Okay, yeah. why not? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but what brought you, what was the evolution to get to this device here? Well, we're always worried about a few things. You know, one is, is performance. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, you know, we're constantly taking the, the newest versions of chips as they come out. We're still working with, uh, with the same vendors that we worked with in the past for our SSC. And, and, okay, because uh, the Shiva plug was all a Marvell, you know, system on a chip. Is, is this the same thing? Yes, we still have Marvell SSC in there. And uh, we've redesigned the board, so it's, it's our board now. But uh, again, you know, back, it's pretty simple insides. It's, uh, you know, an SSC. And, and it's and still pretty straightforward. I mean, you just plug a USB hard drive into it or, or a SD card, and then you plug it into the internet, and now you have an ass. And I know everybody that's watching at home thinking, well, grab an x86 box, put BSD on it, get some R-Sync to the cloud, and there you go. Uh, at least it sounds that simple until you try to explain to your grandmother. Your grandmother could totally work this. Yeah, we're, um, you know, so anyone can do it. So anyone can do, you know, what we've done in here. We just make it really simple. So we're, we're cloud storage, right? That is our, that's our service. Yeah, we believe it should come in, in different ways. And one of them is traditional cloud, and the other way is, is cloud in a box. Well, I was, was going to say, like, when I think cloud, I think, like, okay, it's all up on the internet. Uh, this is kind of like bridging that gap between, like, maybe it's because me as a geek and a lot of geek friends I have, like, Maybe, I don't know if it's a control freak thing, but it's like I like to know that I can point at a box and say, there's my data. But I also like knowing that it's also in the up there stuff. Hopefully nothing happens, you know? Yeah. But now, now is that's, that's where you've gone with the latest announcements, though, is now it's in both places. How does that work? Yeah. Like, what's so the new, new cloud stuff with uh, Pogaplug? No, it's, you know, it's a great question. So we, um, you know, again, we believe the cloud just means it's available anywhere, right? So whether your, your storage is physically stored back in your home, which is how this device works, uh, or whether it's stored somewhere else, which is how our, our kind of you know, cloud offering that we're offering now, where we host your storage, it's still accessed in exactly the same way and shows up in the same places. So it's you know, one UI for all of your storage, regardless of where it physically is. Now, how does, how does Pogoplug now differentiate from, say, a Dropbox? So, you know, there are some great cloud storage you know, services out there as Dropbox and Box.net and go on with the list. Um, we differentiate in a few ways. One is um, we want to be your primary storage for all of your storage, right? So we're really focused on mobile. You know, what happens when you simply don't have a computer or your computer is your laptop, which is being closed up and packed off with you? Um, so it's kind of the anti-sync model, which is don't move stuff around from one place to another. Just make it always available wherever you are. Um, and one of the ways you, oh, oh, wherever you are with an internet connection, with an internet connection, yeah, we still believe you know the world is heading in that direction. You know, every device is going to be internet enabled, but it's getting smaller. And so smaller. it's 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 just the the difference between caching on all of the devices versus just leaving it all in one place. Yeah, that, now it's not in one place because it's both in your you know in your server closet or wherever it may be that you leave your router and, and your pogo plug. 
but uh, but also up in the cloud. Yeah, that, that's exactly. Look, we, you know, we would be naive if we said you know put all of your stuff up in in, uh, in hosted storage. Uh, when, if you look at the prices that you know everyone's out there charging, and, and you know rightfully so, it costs money to hope, you know host it and somewhere and sure. and pay for bandwidth. Uh, so we want to offer both. So you have yeah, a little just bit as, of stuff. Just as naive as it would be to say, oh, just put it on an external hard drive at home. That, that that's exactly right. So you know some of your stuff should be in your house. I've got terabytes and terabytes of photos and videos of my kids that I want to make it accessible, but I don't access it every single day, and and it's it's kind of primary storage for for all of my my you know videos and photos I take. Um, so I want access, but I don't need all the speed and safety. I can keep it in my home. Okay, let's talk about the safety. Now, a lot of our geeky audience, uh, they, they can totally build that BSD server. They can totally set up the rsync and whatever else it is that they want to do to do that. And that's great, but sometimes, you know, especially when you're like an IT guy, you want to come home, you don't want to engineer a network, you just did that at work. Right. Uh, this is a simple solution for that, but some people point out that everything, like to access your device, you don't have, well, through the simplicity and the convenience of, oh, I don't have to set up a dynamic DNS and I don't have to set up port forwarding on my router. Right. But now to get to my files and everything, I go to mypogoplug.com or whatever it may be, but yeah. not, and so everything that you're streaming and everything goes through the Pogo Plug service, thus making basically Pogo Plug like a man in the middle. So how do you guys, like when you were developing the service, did you think about that? And, and what did you do to make sure that there's security there. Yeah, great question. So uh, we do care about security. In fact, a lot of us in the inner company have backgrounds in security. Um, everything is, all the basics are in place. So everything that goes uh, to our servers now is encrypted. Um, obviously, SSL between uh, your client back to our service. And you know, a few things there. One is if you want your stuff offline, unlike other services, you simply, you know, you can unplug this device and you are entirely off the grid at that point. Mm -hmm. So there's always kind of that fail safe way of just, you know, hey, I, I'm not feeling secure right now. Let's, let's take this thing off the internet. Um, when you are on, though, again, we're following all the industry guidelines about making sure that you know your data is is encrypted in the entire way from from client all the way back to device. Okay, some some uh, services like Spider Oak, for example, uh, they're mainly a competitor to say Dropbox, and and their model is we don't even want to know what you're putting up in our cloud, and everything is encrypted on their servers with your key, so you're the only one that can ever access it uh, as it syncs to you. Um, do you guys do any encryption on your side? Does the client? Have a key on your side, or are your files on the Pogo Plug server somewhere? Yeah, so we, so you know, again, we never unless you're hosting it with us. Mm -hmm. If it's storage connected back to your device, we never look at your files. We never have your files, so stuff mm -hmm. will pass through our servers in cases where we can't, you know, make a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection. Oh, okay. So when you go to mypogoplug.com, you try to establish a direct connection between you and your home IP. We we, we do for a few reasons. One is it saves us some bandwidth. We're always well, happy to course. do that, and it's more secure for you. So yeah, so if we can make a peer-to-peer -peer connection, we'll do it. Uh, in cases where we can't, we don't want it to have you, you know, ever go open ports or, or make any changes to your to your network. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll play all the tricks around, uh, you like know, like nat traversal. Yeah, you'd be totally nat traversal, etc. Um, we're encrypting TCP, you know, inside of UDP. So it's you know, it's it's a secure. So you'll, you'll actually have the device at home, like make a reverse connection to you or something like that. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, yeah, do, do you upload it through a client or through the browser, or how do, how can you go about just? Dumping media on it. Yeah, so actually either. So we have you know kind of a rich uh, browser that you can upload through, uh, and we have a uh, client for Mac, Linux, Linux, and Windows where it'll do uh, sync um, all your media over, or you can drag and drop stuff over to your Pogo plug. I love that you guys support Linux. I love to see the evolution of this too, coming from just a simple you know almost consumer kind of uh, little embedded device to where you guys are. Where are you going next with this? Well, you know, we're continuing to make them faster and faster. So we, we're looking at, uh, you know, how do we improve transfer rates when you are local? Uh, how do we improve additional functionality for things like the media processing? Mm -hmm. uh, if we can't offload it, how do we improve it in the device itself? Might we ever see maybe something along the lines of RAID maybe creeping into the territory of like Drobo and things of that nature where it's uh, redundant? You know, um, we actually have a great partnership with Drobo. So in fact, we had a release today where we're um, they're going to be using our software as the remote access solution. Oh, that's cool. Um, so not an area that we you know that we're going to do ourselves, and there we'll, we'll partner with uh, people we feel are doing a great job in the industry. Well, it's pretty slick firmware. I got to say, the user experience is uh, bar none some of the simplest I've ever seen. Uh, I'd love to see the uh, the evolution of this. Thank you so much for coming by and bringing us the toys. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's great yeah, to have you. you.